Mary Steichen Calderon July 1, 1904, to October 24, 1998, was a physician and a public health advocate for sexual education. Her most notable feat was overturning the American Medical Association policy against the dissemination of birth control information to patients. Calderon served as president and co founder of the Sex Information and Education Council of the United States from 1954 to 1982. She was also the medical director for Planned Parenthood. She wrote many publications advocating open dialogue and access to information at all ages. Her extensive work with popularizing sexuality education has often been compared to the Margaret Sanger campaign for birth control. Biography <inaudible> 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 She was born in New York, New York on July 1, 1904. Biographer Jeffrey Moran suggests that her bohemian childhood her father, Edward Steichen, was a noted photographer, her uncle was poet Carl Sandburg, and Quaker upbringing influenced her liberal outlook on sex as well as contributed to her opinionated and passionate nature. When Calderon was six, for instance, she berated the family friend and sculptor Constantine Broncusi for his horizontal headed bird pieces, which would undoubtedly hinder the bird from singing. Broncusi complied and began sculpting birds with more upturned heads. Calderon attended the Burley School in New York City for her secondary education. After graduation, she entered Vassar College, graduating in 1925 with an A.B. in chemistry. Calderon decided to go into theater after graduation and studied for three years at the American Laboratory Theater. She was also the model for the figures on the Pratt Institute flagpole, whose bronze was sculpted by her uncle Willard Dryden Paddock, which was erected in 1926 to commemorate the soldiers who served in World War I. She married actor W. Lon Martin and had two daughters, Nell and Linda. She abandoned acting and divorced in 1933. The death of her eight-year-old daughter Nell, along with dashed acting dreams and a divorce, plunged Calderon into depression. After a series of psychoanalytic tests, she decided to return to school and study medicine. She was 30 years old, she obtained her M.D. degree from the University of Rochester Medical School in 1939. She then received her M.P.H. from Columbia University in 1942. During this time she interned at hospitals and clinics, one belonging to Dr. Frank A. Calderon, whom she married in 1941. Frank Calderon was then a district health officer in New York and eventually became the chief administrative officer of the World Health Organization. Mary Calderon worked as a physician in the Great Neck, New York public school system. In 1953, Calderon joined the staff of the controversial Planned Parenthood Federation of America as its medical director. Her tenure there was prolific. In 1958 she organized a national conference which instigated the movement to legalize abortion. Her biggest success at Planned Parenthood came in 1964, when she overturned the American Medical Association policy against physicians disseminating information on birth control. Calderon did not believe that her work should be limited to preventive measures against pregnancy. Letters arrived at Planned Parenthood daily asking questions about not just sex, but sexuality at large. Calderon came to the realization that sexuality did not just equate genitality, and that sex education was sorely lacking from American society. With the conviction that, "...handing out contraceptives was not enough," Calderon quit her position at Planned Parenthood in 1964 and established the Sex Information and Education Council of the United States, Inc. Driven by Calderon's dynamic talks across the nation and its mission statement to establish man's sexuality as a health entity." The organization became an essential umbrella group for school administrators, sex educators, physicians, social activists, and parents seeking to access information about teaching sexuality education. Calderon and her organization became recognized and respected no doubt riding on the wave of the sexual revolution of the 1960s with the message of sex as a positive force, but opponents also watched her closely. Calderon's insistence that sex education should begin as early as kindergarten did not impress religious conservative groups like Moms Mothers Organized for Moral Stability and MOTOREDE Movement to Restore Decency, who called Calderon the leader of the Sikas Stinkpot. A best-selling 1968 pamphlet, Is the Schoolhouse the Proper Place to Teach Raw Sex? targeted Sikas, calling Calderon the Sikas Sexpot. 
and claiming that she wanted to undermine Christian morality and corrupt children. By 1969 Calderon's influence had been weakened by these attacks, and she stepped down as president, although she remained the executive director of SICAS. Calderon published a rebuttal of the conservative attacks in the Vassar Quarterly, but according to Moran, it was a movement spearheaded by Playboy that would effectively fight the charges against sex education. Nevertheless, Calderon's crusade for sexuality education with a positive approach and moral neutrality continued. Until 1982 she still held leadership positions at SICUS and continued to expand sex education as a means to talk about other topics besides the sexual act, e.g. sexism, homosexuality, etc. Calderon widely gave talks, two of them at Vassar. Her 1983 lecture as President's Distinguished Visitor was titled, Sexuality in Infancy and Childhood. The Need for a Learning Theory. She wrote several books on sex education, the family book about sexuality and talking with your child about sex are two. Although Calderon was adamant about sexual freedom, her beliefs did not align with the burgeoning sexual revolution of the late 1960s. She believed that the sex act should be ultimately reserved for marriage, and that sexuality found its peak expression through the permanent man-woman bond. In an article in Penthouse magazine, and later in his book Sex by Prescription, the American radical psychiatrist Thomas S. Z. A. S. Z. attacked Calderon for allegedly authoritarian tendencies, including hostility to homosexuals. In 1974, the American Humanist Association named her Humanist of the Year. Calderon was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1998. Calderon died on October 24, 1998, at the Longwood Nursing Home in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. She was 94. 